Now, one thing that a lot of fans are embracing for the next couple of days is the Mandalorian Season 3 official trailer, which, by the way, guys, is going to debut on January 16th. We got a couple of more days to go until we get an extended look at the third season by both Favreau and Filoni and what they really have in store for the fans. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the kind and great support. And that brings us to exactly what is actually going on between both Favreau, Filoni, Lucas, Iger, and others. And how they're really going to be reframing and or resetting the Skywalker saga in various different ways. And how Favreau and Filoni really kind of chimed in on exactly how they're going to go about doing that or teased it, if you will. Now, one thing that we already know about is that Disney previously had a concrete plan when it came to the Skywalker Saga timeline in between both episodes 6 and 7 was by establishing that Luke never had a love life, Luke never had a child, Luke's way of the Jedi and his Jedi Order was going to be very different com in comparison to Star Wars Legends, a lot of which is now being changed and adjusted and just shifted around, all thanks to, of course, Favreau and Filoni, given that they do have a lot of privileges over at Lucasfilm that are being accepted by the higher-ups and by Bob Iger, regardless of the current shakeup over at the board of directors. Now, on top of all of this, what's really exciting has a lot to do with the character of Luke and how he's going to be implemented into the Ahsoka series Season 2, Mandalorian Season 4, and other actual installments on the way that's going to be announced at Star Wars Celebration and more. However, with everything, of course, involved with the overall Favreau and Filoni dynamic, is that most recently Disney and Lucasfilm have been creating a strategy to make substantial changes to the Star Wars brand, with the use of Favreau and Filoni on the creative end of things to handle it all. Now, it's described that just recently, however, in a recent interview with both Favreau and Filoni, they went on to confirm that the Skywalker saga is indeed getting reset in many ways. Favreau went on to discuss the following by first stating, The way we look at this is when we went on to actually do this is that Disney had this original plan for characters like Luke, Anakin, and others that we are not satisfied with, and so we are now looking at ways that we can change the course of history for well-established characters, especially like Luke, and of course his journey, and how the course of his life is going to be changed. We are looking at things like the Skywalker family tree, and even a love interest for Luke, but I really can't go into specifics here on how we are going to do that, but it's very exciting stuff. Now, let me just stop here for one second before we move on to what Dave Filoni has to say. Now, we already know that the Skywalker saga, for quite a long time now, has been pretty much, you know, distorted. A lot of fans have been very unhappy with what happened in the sequel trilogy, which, by the way, a lot of events in the sequels are going to be rewritten using the world between worlds. We've talked about this of how a lot will be changed in Ahsoka Season 2, where the WBW is going to be heavily explored that time around. In Ahsoka Season 1, the world between worlds is only going to be used sparingly, very little, so to speak. And a lot of it's going to have to do with her trying to change Anakin's course to becoming Darth Vader only to fail. Alright, so that's the main use of the WBW in Season 1, and one other use as well that we'll be covering as well. However, when you look at what Favreau is saying here is that Disney had this, Disney had this initial plan of really just limiting Luke Skywalker's journey and his life in between episodes 6 and 7, and how they also had a plan to really limit the use of Anakin and really just kind of keep things the way that they were and kind of just telling things completely different than how they were told in Star Wars Legends. So now, basically what John is doing is that he's giving us a literal storytelling dynamic of Star Wars Legends that's about to become canon in the upcoming Star Wars TV shows and yes, even these Mandalorian movies that are currently in the early development phase that's also going to rewrite the Skywalker saga in many different avenues. However, alright, this brings us to another, you know, explanation. 
Dave Filoni goes on to tease the following. He then pitched in by saying this, Like John said, we are really set on reframing the events that take place between 6 and 7, and even aspects that lead into the prequel trilogy era. We will be establishing this using a very special destination. In the upcoming Ahsoka series and Mandalorian Season 4 is when we will really be setting it into motion for the fans. We couldn't be more excited since George Lucas really loved our plans for this and gave us the go-ahead. Now, for those of you that are unaware about what he's alluding to, he's most likely alluding to the world between worlds. However, we also know that the realm of Mortis is going to be a big deal in Season 4 of Mando. How big of a, you know impact will that have on the sequels we're not quite sure just yet but we will be learning more about that as we go down the road however the thing about this that really does stand out to me the most is exactly what Favreau and Filoni are saying about Disney's initial plans so Disney had initial plans for the Skywalker saga to not mimic legends at all whatsoever they did not want to replicate that they did not want to emulate that at all and that's basically what now John and Dave are going to be doing. They're going to take all the Legends content and throwing it into the Skywalker Saga across the board. Of course, things that take place in the prequels, things that take place in the original trilogy, and even after the original trilogy. A lot of that is going to be implemented into the timeline, hence resetting it, so to speak. Now, this does not mean at all that they're deleting movies like 7, 8, and 9, or 4, 5, and 6. Nothing like that at all, but they're creating new meaning, new canon material toward those films that are going to be official starting the end of this year, leading into 2024, before the live action stuff really kind of begins fleshing all of that out. Now, the thing that I think a lot of fans need to be very well aware of is the fact that this also is going to have a lot to do with the overall character arc of Luke Skywalker, even during the events of the originals and after the events of the sequel trilogy movies as well. We're gonna be learning a lot more about that and how a lot of the canon's gonna be shifted around. And when you think about it this way, right? John and Dave were very unhappy about The Last Jedi, at least John Favreau was. That's why he came on board of The Mandalorian because he had his Disney contacts when he was actually creating the Jungle Book and the Lion King. He used his contacts then to get into the Mandalorian series, the first live action Star Wars show. Initially, Jon Favreau, believe it or not, was up for grabs to become a co-writer alongside J.J. Abrams for episode nine, but he got rejected later on. And that basically was kind of like his little early shoe in or his little well, you know, uh, you know, his little connection there to Disney to getting this role as a director, as a writer, etc. So overall, guys, I'm very intrigued to hear what each and every one of you guys have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.